Hello everyone, welcome to the YouTube channel that is Keyboard Skills Pro. And let me press a button and you should be able to see me. Welcome everyone to a music workshop live stream. Uh, we've been doing quite a bit of playing um, with our uh, various live streams. So I thought it would be nice to do a sort of a music lesson style workshop today. Um, a master class, a, a tutorial, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I sincerely hope so quickly adjust my monitor there, that you're going to enjoy um, learning about pipe organs and theatre pipe organs. Um, for many of you who know me, I'm a um, fairly well-known theatre organist in the UK, uh, and I've had the pleasure over the years of playing um, several of the um, uh, UK theatre organ installations, but I also play church organs, um, cathedral organs, and uh, I um, often can be found doing um, music of sort of light classics and uh, popular organ repertoire um, here and there, mostly around East Anglia. Um, but uh, it's good fun to educate people who maybe are getting into playing pipe organs for the first time. So if you're watching tonight and you play the home organ and have always been fascinated by church pipe organs, um, the sounds, or um, I often wonder, well, maybe if I got a chance to have a go on a pipe organ or a theatre pipe organ, what would I do? Well, there's several videos on my YouTube channel that you can watch, and indeed many, many tens of people have watched them and we've got some lovely comments over the years um, where we've been able to help give folks the tools to um, educate them and get them started with a bit of knowledge so when you actually go and play the actual real pipe organ itself you've got uh, like your sort of organist toolkit to take with you. Anyway, so um, it's going to be a fair bit of talking tonight but we're going to be doing some playing, um, we're going to be doing some demonstrations of different sounds, showing you how to make registrations but also just basically explain I think we might be back. Hello. Hi, everyone. Sorry, the, the 4G stopped streaming then. Um, it does happen sometimes in the warm weather. Um, actually, I'm about due for another 4G Promatic live stream. Anyway, sorry about that, folks. Hope you're all still with us. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so we'll, we'll keep an eye on that as we're going along. Anyway, um, so General Span says, Hi, pal. Nice to hear from you. Um, Ernie from Cedar Falls, Iowa. There goes an aeroplane overhead. Nice evening for a flight. Um, Peter C, an evening all on this. Looking forward to the first summer night as we enjoy tea in the garden. Well, very, very pleasant. Um, Trevor Bunce. Hey, Trevor, welcome to you, sir. Thank you for being with us. Philip Russell's here. Um, um, so my A-level math student sat one of his exams today, so I'm free to watch. Hooray. Well done, Philip. And uh, Philip actually has a lovely uh, uh, classical organ at home. Um, we've got Ernie in Iowa. Tom, are you ever coming to Iowa to play the organ? I'd love to come to America to play the organ. I used to in the old days. Uh, I'd love to do a little um, a tour of theatre organs, do some concerts. I'd love to see if we can get that sorted out. Gary, uh, Rich, hey, Gary from um, Southern California. Uh, Steve's up in um, Edinburgh, up in Scotland. Douglas Watts. Hello, Douglas. Nice to see you, sir. Welcome. Um, Alan Robinson in Wow, 34 degrees in Leeds. That's crazy, Alan. Wow, we. What about that? Um, and uh, yes, uh, General Spence said, um, I'd love to have a go on one. The only one I played was in 1982. Was that a pipe organ or a theatre pipe organ? We'll talk about that. Stephen Pat's on. Hey, Steve. Um, oh, and uh, David's on from Penzance. Welcome to you, Dave. I know David's a big fan of theatre organs. Uh, Trevor Bond says, froze up here. Yes, yes, and it's all gone. Yes, and he's back, as Steve says. <laughs> yeah, he, he does that sometimes, the 4G. It's very reliable, and then it just stops for some reason. No no idea why, but hey, it's it's a miracle that it works at all. Um, and Keith's on. Evening, Keith. Looking forward to the workshop. Best wish from Susan and Keith. Barry Gregory. Hey, Barry. Um, lovely to see lots of students on tonight. So we're going to be starting off by playing and showing you around the various uh, pipe organ settings. Um, so that will be really nice and oh yes and general Swan says yes it was a theatre organ which theatre organ then let us know right folks let's uh, head over to here i'm going to put the still on while i move around i just need to change back to the pedal cam very quickly so let's talk about pipe organs um now pipe organs um go way way back way way back um we can chase trace the almost the basic design of a pipe organ back to roman times and there was a thing they used to have in the um, 
in the uh, the Gladiator Colosseum things, they used to have a thing called a hydraulis, which, as it suggested, was water powered, and the musician would sort of pump with his foot this little chamber of water, and um, they would um, have these little pipes on the top, and you could actually push levers to open valves to let the um, let the the thing play. And of course, it had to be loud enough over all the cheering of, you know, these gladiators trying to kill each other and fight lions and things. Um, but the, the the pipe organ has been around in one form or another for probably getting on now for seven, eight, and hundred years plus. I would probably say. Um, and uh, we are going to start by showing you around just some of the basic stops. Now, I appreciate many of you probably won't have access to a, a real pipe organ, but if you do get the chance to, I would thoroughly take the opportunity. Can't recommend it enough. It's really, really cool to have a go on a real pipe organ. So I'm going to show you here a little picture on the screen. I'm using my virtual organ software for this. And this is a, a two manual um, organ. So we've got two keyboards and a variety of stops. Okay, so that's the kind of thing you might come across when you actually come to play. So you've got the, the keyboard down here and you've got the keyboard up here and obviously the pedal board down the bottom. And how it works is the, 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 the classical ranks, we tend to call them classical organs or, or church organs. If they're in a cathedral, they're a cathedral organ. If they're in a chapel, they're a chapel organ. Now, most of you will have digital keyboards and, and digital organs at home. You will have many of these sounds. Um, so just, just a few people off the list I can think of. Um, we've got um, we've got uh, Verzi owners, we've got Yamaha organ owners, Yamaha keyboard owners, we've got people with um, Lowry's and Ringways and different instruments. So you'll be able to find these um, these various things um, on there. But the most basic tone of a, of a pipe organ is something called the diapason, the principle. Um, these are metal pipes, and they don't sound like anything in the symphony orchestra at all. So they have a nice sound like that, and that's what we call, that's the open diapason, um, and uh, that, that's normally selected by drawing out a draw stop like that. Sometimes they're rocker switches, like on my um, organ here. Um, but that, that's the sound of the diapason. And of course, when you hear that, you go, oh, that's a church organ. I recognise that sound. So that's available at eight feet. Okay, and that's the, that's the kind of every organ in the world worthy of the title organ has a diapason. So, so even if in your organ it might say, um, I don't know, it might say classical organ one, church organ one, um, if you've got Lowry's and Ringways and Versi, sometimes you get the actual names of the s s individual ranks on the screen in the organ button. And that's sort of how that sort of sounds. So there's your diapason. And of course, the, the keys themselves don't do anything. They are simply, uh, in, a, in a traditional organ, um, you have a thing called a tracker action. And a tracker action is where the key is connected to a, um, a rod, and the rod pushes up when the key, the back of the key goes up, and it, it pulls a rod and another wire and everything. So you can track the action to the, the pallet under the, um, the rank of pipes. So there's a, um, a valve, and the, the thing literally pulls the valve open, and the pressurized air which is inside the box that the pipes sit on, that's called the wind chest, is then allowed to blow into the pipe. Um, the, the pipe organ really is nothing more than a kind of a giant box of recorders with, sitting on boxes which have pressurized air. Anyway, that, that's the diapase, an eight foot. Now, normally that's available then at four foot. So you hear that's getting brighter and then maybe there'll be a 15th, that's two octaves above. So now we've got three stops out, and you can see that here, look, we've got the diapason at eight, the principal at four. Sometimes they use, they use um, principal 
in place of diapason and then the 15th is the the two foot rank and that creates a very bright sound let me just put a few pedal stops on here and it goes a bit like this So by taking off the two foot, I don't get such a bright ensemble. And if I do the eight and the two, I get a kind of a hollow sound. And so that's your diapasons. Now, now those are what we call the fundamental tone of a pipe organ. They're a bit like the strings in an orchestra. Um, and uh, that's what helps keep the, the sort of the fundamental sound actually uh, actually going. So the next family are the, the flute family and these are often wooden pipes and they're square in shape and they have a little stopper in the end and you get things like um, flute uh, gedacht and that sounds like this. Very woody Very sort of chiffy sort of sound, you know, <laughs> that sort of thing. Now that's available at eight foot, also at four foot flute. And so that gives a softer, more rounded sound um, to that of the, um, of the, uh, um, and, um, that um, 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 has the has the thing gone again? I think it's I think it's still working. I think it is anyway. We'll keep. I think we're back. I think we're back. Hello. I think we're back, everybody. <laughs> Sorry. I'm keeping an eye on my 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 thing is uh, streaming as best it can. I think. Um, so yeah. So read ranks. Uh, things like trumpets. Makes a little sound like that, which is uh, which is very pleasant. And um, um, uh, you've then also got um, the um, the oboe and the clarinet. So so what you can do is as you're playing, you can make um, changes to the stops. So you can have a nice full ensemble with the the uh, the, the diapason. You can have a a softer sound with the flutes. And that's quite nice for a complemental or softer time. So, um, and then if you want a really bright thing, you, you, bring, you sort of bring them all out, you know, you bring out the eights, the fours, the twos, and then add a reed, and that does this. very bright biting sound and that's what the reeds do they offer a, a nice biting sound um, from the music which is very pleasant now um, we might also have some softer ranks um, uh, the, the pedals let's talk about the pedals quickly so I've got um, again I've got 16 foot uh, soft wood base which you may or may not be able to hear depending on the speakers you're listening on I can have a, a di maybe a diapason at eight foot. And I've also, because with the diapason, um, I mean, the, the most common ones are the wood pipes because the, the, the problem with pipes is when they're very big, they obviously cost more money to make and that makes the organ more expensive. So, so you normally have the 16 and the eight foot wood pipes, a board on and a, a flute um, rank at eight. And then if the, the church had a bit more money, they might. Hello, sorry everyone. We are having a little bit of up and down tonight with the, um, uh, with the 4G. 
Um, so um, I apologise that we keep dropping in and out a little bit, but we are doing our best. Um, just very quickly looking up the chat, um, we've got... Um, oh, diddly dumb. Um, oh, so Genosman says he played the word that's in East Kirk Bribe, which is now in the Clyde Bank. Oh, OK, the Clyde Bank uh, job, yes. I know of that one. Um, and uh, yes, uh, he said. Uh, you see, oh, he says you've connected it to your own organ. Yes, he has the TTT theatre samples there. Very nice. Philip Russell's put um, as a chorister. I had the opportunity to hand pump the church organ. That's a good point, actually, Philip. Yeah, the um, the organs actually in the old days um, before you had blowers, they had to be hand pumped. Small organs. Um, Gary Rice has got the 450 Paramount set. That's nice. We're going to be using the 310 Paramount later on. Um, gone again, oh dear, back again, yes I can hear you. Carrie is on, hey Carrie, just got home. Good, we will keep a, 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 a thing folks on the, um, on the stream thing. Um, so anyway, we're talking about the swell now. So the swell organ, the pipes of this are enclosed in a large box, almost like a pipe room, which is part of the main organ, and there are louvers that open in stages when you push forward um, the swell pedal. So if I put a little selection of stops on, and I'll push my, just see it off the camera there, if I, and I'll push it forward, you can hear louder, forward, quieter, back. So it lets you swell the sound, hence why it's called a swell. Um, normally they, they have a similar selection of stops, but there are some more softer imitative uh, ranks in the swell. So here we've got a principle. And because it's inside a box, it naturally is a bit quieter to start with. And again, we might have a four foot as well. Which is very pleasant. Um, you often find string ranks, very thin metal pipes. There we go, very soft undulating sound. Um, there's an oboe, sort of, sort of imitative of the orchestral kind about the clarinet. There we go, and um, one or two other instruments as well. Um, so if I was playing um, a soft piece, I could use my viola de gamba. Now you might get things like um, a, a soft string rank. It's very, very keen. There we go. Um, and then next to it is one called a celeste, which we'll talk about that in a minute. We've also got some stops um, which link the keyboards together. So I can have a sound on this keyboard and I can have a setting on the lower keyboard, and then I can link the keys together by using the um, the um, great to um, uh, swell to great coupler, and that is a stop that you'll see over here. And when I pull it out, it sometimes you see the keys going down mechanically. So if I put a bit more on the top keyboard. So I can then play that sound there with this sound down here. So that's a, a sort of a cool organist cheat feature. And there's also octaves as well. You can, you can add an octave, let the organ play the keys above your playing. So again, if I'm playing with something like this, if I put the swell octave on, it would do this. So that's how organs get such big sounds, because the organist is incapable of playing everything that you're hearing. So when you play, um, for example, on the swell, if you play one note and bring out the principal, that's one pipe, then add the four foot pipe, that's playing the pipe above from a different set of pipes. So there's two pipes playing there. Okay, here's another one, this is the eight foot clarinet, there's another pipe, piccolo four foot, flute four foot, flute eight foot, Lieblich Bordon sixteen foot, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stops there, which means there are seven pipes sounding, speaking if you will, 
I'm only playing one key. So when I play a, a three note chord, there's 21. And that's why the pipe organ has such a big sound to it. Okay, so I hope that's making some sense. So um, you'll probably find that the if it's a tracker action, you'll probably find the keys a lot heavier than you're used to playing at home. And of course, there's a pedal board, which will be a full radiating concave pedal board often um, with probably 27, 28 plus notes up to a maximum of 32. Um, keys are normally 61. You do get organs which have a few off the ends. So you get 56 um, keys or, or whatever. So anyway, but that, that's kind of the basics of, of what a pipe organ um, kind of does. Um, Steve's put, Tom, the organ volume is a bit low. Oh, hello. Okay, we can um, we can turn that up a bit, Steve. Make it a little bit, make it a little bit louder for you. Make sure my microphone is behaving itself as well. <laughs> okay, so so that, so there we go. That's um, kind of the um, the base. Hang on, behave microphone. That's kind of the basics of um, how the um, the thing there. And um, photo puppets put. Um, should the volume of the full swell match the volume of the great organ? Um, not really. No, the, the swell will always be slightly reserved because it is inside a box. Um, yeah, my microphone is not behaving itself. Um, the the third keyboard, which would sit here, you then have swell, great, and a third keyboard, which is called the choir. And the choir division is again a separate little organ, which is kind of set away often at the back of the, the, the main organ or in a different area of the church. It can be called an antiphonal organ. And it's very, very soft, very soft, gentle soft, normally for accompanying a choir or maybe for communion. So, um, yes, now, some ideas on pipe organ uh, registrations. Oh dear, I'm sorry, my, my microphone is... Um, uh, not behaving itself for some reason. Rather annoying because I've just brought a brand new one. Anyway, um, so for example, you can play your left hand on the swell with the the string and the celeste. The celeste rank is is the same as the. So I've got a viola, a viola de gamba here, and a viola um, is a little string rank. Then you have a, the same set of pipes which are tuned slightly sharper than the its its uh, brother sister rank, and it creates this kind of sort of undulating sound um, from the thing. And then on the, the grate, we could put a, a nice pair of flutes and something like this. So notice I'm playing the chords on the swell, the melody on the grate. So I've got my flutes, eight and four on the grate. Nice soft 16 and eight on the pedals. Strings. There we go. And then on the grate for the next verse, I might go for some diapasons, eight and four. top. So you often see church organists playing with both hands and that's because they want to do a chorus down here or a verse and then maybe up here. So you can sort of mix around. Now the great thing with a lot of modern electric organs, you will get presets built in them. So you can get some very, very nice uh, registrations there. So, so yeah, so it's fun to play those kind of pipe organs. And uh, so you've got a lot of these sounds, these flutes and diapasons and strings and things in the organ button um, on your, your home electronic organ or whatever you, you might be playing. So it's, uh, it's good fun. It's nice to play and uh, lots of opportunities there. And uh, you might 
if somebody says, well, I can, you know, let you have a go on the local church organ, it might just have one keyboard and pedals. It might have two keyboards and pedals. You know, you never know. Each organ is very different. But, but by having a little bit of knowledge of the families and how you can mix some of them, um, you can get some very, very nice uh, settings. So if I was playing, a, say, Amazing Grace and leading a, 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 a choir, I would probably go with um, my diapasons, uh, 8, 4 and 2, get a nice, strong, healthy pedal. I can also put the keyboards to the pedals using uh, the swell and great to pedal couplers. So if I've got sound there, I can put great to pedal on and those pedals will play down there. So I might go... And then I might have a softer setting for the... I could do this. the eighth, about a bit more 16 on the bass. A bit bigger, add some flutes and then some reeds. a bit louder, Steve. <laughs> um, oh, Tom McCauley's on. Hey, Tom, David Lindsay, welcome, Dave. Howdy, Keyboard Skills Pro, he says. Yay. Um, Steve says, oh, hello. On my small two-manual church organ, as you just demonstrated, I play the chords on the swell, the tune on the grate, but mostly have the coupler on as well. Yeah, that's right, Steve. Yeah, that's one way of doing it. Yeah, I mean, there's no, there's no kind of, there's a lot of traditional ways of doing it and ways that work very well, but nothing is set in stone. So, that's our church organ gang. Hope that's been useful. And um, you can also see on my YouTube channel uh, a video called Pipe Organ for Beginners, which I uploaded about a few months ago. It's like Pipe Organ 101. It will get you going on church organs, particularly if you're coming from a, a keyboard or piano background, maybe exploring these organs for the first time. So very, very exciting stuff. So let's now head across um, a few decades into the world of the theatre organ. And um, I'm going to load in an organ I don't use that often, but uh, this is the um, a little Wurlitzer style thing. And um, so Rister Hope Jones, who we kind of credit with the, uh, the creation of what we call the theatre organ, um, he um, obviously grew up playing the church organ. He used to adapt church pipe organs as kind of test beds for his new electric action where he used solenoid magnets to move the the valves which are kind of what we call motors they're like a little leather thing that work with um, it's all to do with um, pressurized air um, but it was a way of disconnecting the console the keys and the stops from the pipe work you could have the console and in fact it, there's a, a well-known story of Mr Hope Jones um, cannibalizing his one of his local church organs, putting it in his action as, as uh, like a test organ, and then wheeling the console out into the church paddock and playing it with this very long cable attached to it to prove that he'd done it. But of course, Mr. Hope Jones wanted a more orchestral sounding organ. So this familiar picture of the sort of the Wurlitzer style console that we tend to associate, of course they're all Wurlitzers to the man in the street, but there's Comptons, there's Christie's, there's Mollers, there's Bartons, there's Page, there's Standarts, there's uh, some rare ones like Conicas and Ruts, um, and so on and so forth. Um, but Mr Hope Jones came up with this idea of the sweeping tongue-shaped stop rail, the coloured stops to give us the tone colours, the arrangement of the t these tabs that could be flicked up and down, very, very quickly like that look. Um, and the whole organ action is a mixture of electrics and it's called ele an electro-pneumatic action. But let's just play a quick number so you can hear what this little Wurlitzer sort of makes a sound of. <laughs>
And of course, the very familiar sound there of the, the wobble, the big theatrical sound. And that, of course, is what Mr. Hope Jones was starting for it. I think he actually maybe he set out to do that, but he certainly wanted to make an orchestral organ. And that's the idea of the theatre organ. A church organ or um, is very much um, used in a liturgical setting. And the reason they were used in churches is because they were the only thing that was available um, that was loud enough to power the music in the church. You know, the, the other instruments, you know, four, five, six, seven hundred years ago just weren't loud enough. And it's cheaper to pay one musician than it is to pay a whole church band. So that's how the organ and the church got tied in together. And of course the church was a big was the big employer of musicians in the old days. No musician worked for themselves, you know, back in the sort of 13, 1400s, you worked for the church if you were a musician and you, you played for services and you wrote things for services and did all that. Um, it wasn't until a few hundred years after that that um, um, composers started to write um, sort of music just for non-religious non use and eventually composers started to become self-employed in, in, um, in, uh, in a certain era. Anyway, but, but, but Mr Hope Jones um, obviously had to use what he had at hand, so we do have a diapason inside most theatre organs. A kind of a standard little Wurlitzer or Compton little theatre organ, might be six to eight ranks, that's a kind of the average sort of size, and he, he, you would have a diapason, you'd have a flute, you'd have a string, You'd have a vox humana. You might have a celeste, but you'd have you'd have a diapason, a flute, a vox. Um, you'd have a string rank. You have a tibia, and then normally a reed like a trumpet, and that that's kind of the standard six. So here's the diapason in this little word. It's a thing. <laughs> so quiet. <laughs> there we are. And of course, that sounds pretty much like the one that we had in the uh, in the church organ because it is the same set of pipes, exactly the same, no different. Um, we have a flute, an actual flute, a little bit like the Ged Act. We have the viol d'orchestra here, the strings. There'd be a violin, maybe as they call it. Same set of pipes. We have a vox humana. Which is a reed pipe, but doesn't sound very interesting at the moment. And of course, we have the tibia. Now you're probably thinking, well, hang on, a minute, that doesn't sound much like a tibia. Well, no, it doesn't, because that's what a tibia sounds like before the tremulants go on over here. And in a theatre organ, um, the tremulant is not a, not unique to the theatre organ. Tremulants have been in pipe organs for centuries, but they never really got a vast amount of work. A lot of traditional organists don't really like tremulants. But Hope Jones knew of the tremulant, and he decided to adapt it to give him the vibrato that brass and string and vocal singers use to make their instruments sound more pleasant. So he devised this little... This, this adapted this box and, and a lot of the theatre ones have probably two or three maybe four tremulants in sort of the small ones but normally two or three so you have a tremulant for the tibia clausa so when I put that on this then happens and you can set the vibrato rate and that's what makes one of the big difference which is between the theatre organ I mean, yes things like the wind pressure is much higher the action is electrified along with the pneumatics. I mean, some manufacturers dropped pneumatic actions in consoles, they just went electric fully. Um, and uh, but, but the tremulant is the big thing. So if I put my diapason on and my strings and my flute, they sound like this. Very much like a church organ. Um, but if I then, I'm just putting a few stops on here, if I then pop on the main tremulant, that's the main set of pipes. So I can get things like that. And of course, Mr. Hope Jones followed the church organ system of pipes being in footages, but he arranged them all in a special order. And so they go from the loudest to the quietest. So the loudest eight foot pipe is the trumpet, 
followed by the diapason, followed by the tibia, followed by the clarin, uh, the, the string, followed by the flute, and the quietus is the vox humana. And you can hear the vox humana there when it has a tremulant. Goes from sounding like a group of sheep to a load of sheep and goats warbling. <laughs> but anyway, so it's all the eights are together, all the fours together. And the difference with the layout of the stops is on a, on a church organ, you tend to get the, the families of pipes grouped together. Whereas on a theatre organ, the stops go loudest to quietest and they're colour coded. Red for the reeds, the brassy sounds of the organ. Uh, white for the flu pipes, the diapasons, the flutes, the tibias, white for the strings, and then yellow for the celestes, which is that, that under, uh, under Maris undulating tuning thing. Um, but what Mr. Hope Jones did completely differently is he introduced a, th a thing known as unification, which is where instead of um, in a traditional organ you have a set of pipes, which is called an eight foot rank, so the 61 pipes, one for each key. And then if you want a four foot, you have to then get another set of pipes, but start the lowest pipe, not at eight feet, but at four feet, and then keep going all the way up until they get smaller. And then you have to pull two stops out and two pipes placed simultaneously. Now what happens with a theater organ, let's take the tibia, okay. There's eight foot. So what happens is if I then want to play the four foot, the electric relay action of the organ simply plays the higher pipes in that same set. So in other words, it's one set, one rank of tibia, unlike a church organ where I have to have two tibias to do that same job. So this means less pipes, the same effect, and that means it's cheaper to build and, in theory, and it makes the organ smaller. And then of course when you go too high in the footages, you, you then go up here and you need the pipes way up here. So he extended each rank with a set of 12 pipes to give you the extra octave. So the tibias originally were at 16, 8 foot and 4 foot. And that was a nice setting. So again, I can add the strings, look, add the flute, the, 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 the violin adds a bit of bite. And you can hear all the ranks of vibra the, the vibrato is unified, it's singing nice together. Add a bit of bite with the trumpet, tuba. But then I can bring the 16 foot stops in to make it lower. And so on. Now, most of Hope Jones's early organs, a lot of the um, a lot of the pipes didn't go above four foot because he didn't like the sound of the two foot. Later on, when when he had sold a lot of his organs to Wurlitzer, um, the the two foot tibia extension was put in. That's where they kind of opened up the holes a bit, made it a bit a little bit screechy. So. Hope Jones liked the up to 16, 8 and 4. He liked that sort of sweet sound. And in fact, if you play an early 1920s word, it's, it's a very sweet, uh, mellow, lovely, nostalgic sound, you know. Um. But when I add the two foot, it gets a lot brighter. And Hope Jones wasn't a huge fan of that. But of course, they were selling these organs by the um, you know the the mid the teens. They were starting to sell these organs in the 1915, 16, 17 onwards to theatre movie theatres for this new thing that was catching on called um, moving pictures. So of course, they needed to have the organs brighter and bigger in the room. Um, so yeah, so that's how that works. So on a two-manual Wurlitzer, or let's say a theatre organ, the, the top keyboard is called the solo, 
the lower keyboard is called the accompaniment and the pedal is called the pedal. Most of you will probably come across three manual organs. If they are three proper manuals, it's a complement, great, and then the top keyboard is called the solo. There are some organs which have a complement and solo, and the solo is the main keyboard. Then there's a third keyboard which is called a coupler, and that just has a minimal set of stops. Um, Mr. Hope Jones also added percussion, so we have tambourines and castanets on the lower for the rhythm section of the. Um, of the uh, the band because again that's what we were trying to create here was an orchestra. Now you'll probably find that the theatre organ console is a little lighter than a church organ, not not a huge amount, but it's certainly a, uh, it, it's a lot easier to play and if, you, if the first theatre organ you get is a Wurlitzer to play you're in easy street because with Wurlitzers you can just slap the stops down and whatever you slap down normally makes a nice combination. Um, Comptons and Christie's you have to be a little bit more selective with the stops um, but that's what Wurlitzers were designed to do they were just designed to plop down stops so any virtually any organist because a lot of these organists who were playing in the early movie theatres weren't theatre organists because that job had only just started. They were church organists or pianists learning to play the organ. So that's why Wurlitzer sold a lot of them because they were, I suppose, easy to get a nice sound out of. But um, anyway, no, that, that's, a, that's a conjecture and um, a bit of bit of a, a possible thought there. Anyway, but you know, you can take like the strings, eight foot tibia, the eight foot strings, the flute, the vox, you get a nice eight foot sound like this look. That's quite nice. Virtually all theatre organs always have registration actions in combination capture actions, so you'll always find stops and things to play and get some nice registrations. Those are normally set up by the, the owner of the organ or, or whoever. Um, we also have tune percussion. We have a glockenspiel. Real, a real glockenspiel there. Um, little um, xylophone, which can be made to reiterate. There's orchestra bells, and lots of other things where you get cymbals on the pedals. So, so literally a one-person orchestra. So, um, so if you're playing theatre organ, um, you know you really need to think about probably playing more popular music. I mean, the early theatre organists, their repertoire was a little limited because songs hadn't been written yet. You and I can look back over the 1930s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and so on, and we have a very, very rich seam of popular music. But theatre organists in 1920 didn't have you know, Jerome Kern songs from the 30s because they hadn't been written yet. So their, their, you know, repertoire was probably a little bit more classical based or light classics, bit of ragtime, marches, you know, things like that. Um, but uh, yeah, but you can more or less play anything nowadays on a theatre organ. Church organs generally, it's kind of the done thing to stick more to the traditional repertoire and certainly the repertoire is not always interchangeable. I mean, I've played popular songs on a church organ, sometimes with a, a raised eyebrow or two. Um, there's a video on my YouTube channel of me performing Dave Brubeck's Take 5 on a church organ, which went down very, very well. Um, <laughs> but there we go. Oh, we also have sound effects on a theatre organ. You know, um, things like that. Bits and no noises because they were accompanying silent films with them. That was the original idea. There's also um, octave couplers. So if you're playing with a nice registration, let's say something like this, for example. I can add the octave coupler and it makes it brighter. And then you can add some uh, some percussion to make uh, make the uh, the sound of the organ a bit more a bit more interesting. Something like this, maybe. So 
there you are, adds a bit more noise. Um, you get the, the, you know, the guys at the tower. They, you know, they, they love to do this jumping around stuff. So you can get the, um, you know, um, So <laughs> that beats going to the gym. And of course, as you add more stops, you get bigger registrations. Things like that. Some, th ooh, he says, dropping his mouth. Some theatre organs also had, um, also had uh, uh, piano attachments. Not all of them, some of them. Um, the, an upright or a grand piano, which would sound a little bit, if I can find the thing on the lower keyboard. There we go. And of course that could be played at the same time as the organ, um, the piano was slightly behind the organ because of the delay from the action to the piano, so it, it did get the nickname the Phantom Piano because the keys went down, so a bit like that, add the four foot piano, the eight foot piano. So. Add the glockenspiel, adds a bit more interest to it. Dave Schuster has asked, hello Dave, nice to hear from you. What sample set is that little word it's from? Um, I got this um, a little while ago actually, I don't use it that much funny enough. It's the Virginia word, it's uh, from Milan Digital Audio. Um, it's not a real organ, I don't think, it's just made up of little stops. Um, it's quite cute, little, little tiny word, it's uh, quite good for these sort of things. Um, yeah. The Virginia Wurlitzer, Dave. Tom McCauley says, Wurlitzer's always remind me of the Blackpool Tower. Yeah, very much so. That's probably, along with Radio City Music Hall, that's probably the most famous Wurlitzer in the world, um, the number of people that have seen it. Um, but, you know, it's it's fun to explore. Anyway, so we've um, we've done nearly an hour there, folks. Anyway, so that's been interesting. Just I thought we'd do something a bit different today, just instead of just playing music um, um, as we do in the other things. But, yeah, it's, it's fun to explore when you're playing church organs or playing at home and having to go to him or a bit of Elgar or some Bach, you now know some of those sounds in your organ, even if they're just labelled church one, church two, pipe three, pipe four, you might be able to hear some of the changes there. But there are loads and loads and loads of um, videos available on my YouTube channel and there's a myriad covering the theatre organ, registrations, playing techniques and so on. Uh, we've done some on the church organ, um, there's videos for beginners to theatre organ and pipe organ, check them out, they're all in the uh, playlist on the channel. Please do hit the subscribe button and if you, if you enjoyed this lesson folks and like to support me please visit patreon.com um, forward slash keyboard sills pro and Peter has just gone, <gasps> there's the P word. Yes, um, <laughs> um, and uh, that helps support you know the hour of my time and and the uh, the channel and everything and all that kind of stuff. So um, yeah, so it's been good fun. So thanks for, for listening. Thanks uh, for sharing um, your time with me. Um, and Trevor Bunce has put the most important thing, which I forgot to, to close with. The most important stop on an organ is the room. Never were truer words spoken. Not by Trevor, by someone else. I think it was. Um, Audley who said that, um, and um, yes, um, the, the the room is the most important thing. If you go to a church and it's big and echoey, you've got to allow for all the acoustics. A theatre organ will sound different in one venue if it's moved from its theatre. Um, cinema organs sound their best when they are in actual cinemas. That's the best acoustics for them, and some of them are in gorgeous halls, which sound very, very lovely. Um, but uh, yeah, so anyway, anyway, oh, Heidi Cooper says very interesting. Thank you, photo puppet. That's a great name. Thank you. Was a very interesting subject. Yeah, it's fun to explore the different things. Anyway, the 4G seems to have settled down now. Um, I'm just going to change. 
um, very quickly and we're going to pop on a different instrument and we'll finish off with a couple of numbers in theatre organ style. So as I say, do hit subscribe folks, check out the channel and there's loads of stuff but on Patreon you do get bonus videos and also lots of PDFs um, which kind of help you with um, things, registrations and so on. So anyway, thanks for watching everybody, it's been a great pleasure as always and uh, I'll finish off with a medley of songs um, in theatre style and uh, we'll see if we can use um, several ranks. This is the Paramount pack with 10 ranks of stops and uh, we'll see what comes out of the back. Thanks for watching everybody, take care and uh, thanks for your company as always. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.